Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio. So today we need to look at some reveals from temporal forces. And these aren't little reveals, ladies and gentlemen. These are very big reveals. Two of them at least, well, maybe three, are incredibly big reveals. And we're going to start today not with a secret rare, though I've got one of those to show you. And not with an ace back, though I've got one of those to show you. And not with a new EX, so I've got a couple of those to show you. No, 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 no. We're going to start with an item card that has now been confirmed to be called Buddy Buddy Poffin. This is what the lovely Antoine Boulet translated the name as. We didn't know if that was going to be the English name. It absolutely is. And this is going to be one of the biggest cards from Temporal Forces. This card is a very, very big deal. And what it does is it allows you to search your deck for two basic Pokemon. Each of which has 70 HP or less, whack them on your bench, shuffle your deck. And yeah, this is phenomenal. And you see, the thing is, it's all about rotation. Because when we hit rotation, things are getting a little bit dicey. Like in terms of searching for small Pokemon, what you would generally want to do is you'd want to be using Level Ball. Except Level Ball was last printed in Battle Stars and Battle Stars is rotating out, so gutted. And in terms of early game searching out your basic Pokemon, like by far the best we've got so far is your Battle VIP Pass. Great card, phenomenal card. See, a huge amount of play. It's rotating out. Is Buddy Buddy Poffin as good as Battle VIP Pass? No. No, it's not. Now, the good news is it's a card that can be played on any turn, whereas Battle VIP Pass is specifically only your first turn of the game. But... Battle VIP Pass gets you any two basic Pokemon. This specifically only gets you basic Pokemon with 70 HP or less. So things like Radiant Greninja, which would often be one of your first choices. No, you can't go and get this. If you're playing a Pokemon EX heavy deck or a Pokemon V heavy deck, it's not going to search them out. This is for evolution decks. And look, if you're playing an evolution deck like Charizard, for instance, you're going to be playing this card. Some decks won't, obviously, it won't work. But the fact of the matter is, when we hit rotation, our Pokemon search options are getting weak. Much weaker than they were pre-rotation, than they are right now. So, Buddy Buddy Poffin, yeah, you better believe this card is going to be your, I'm doing it, Buddy Buddy. Seriously, this card is absolutely huge. We expected it to be in the set. We're not surprised that it's in the set. But we absolutely are delighted that it's in the set. Speaking of cards, we are delighted that they're in the set. Iron Crown EX. This is another card which is going to be very, very big. And before we even get to what the card does, let's admire the artwork for a second. The artwork here is absolutely phenomenal. We've got that thing whereby Nagamiso has gone and actually done all of the alternate arts for these future Pokemon. I previously showed you Iron Boulder as an example, which is rather phenomenal. And yeah, this is really stunning and wonderful. I don't think it's quite as good as the ancient stuff T-Zero's done. Showed you Raging Bolt the other day, and oh my word, I adore that card. But make no mistake about it, these are still stunning. And it's also a very, very good card. Now, Twin Shottles here, 50 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Nah. Now, if it was 70 damage, and I'm KOing support Pokemon, evolving basics, etc., then we can talk. That would be legit. But it doesn't do 70. It does 50. So, it's not so good. The good news is we have an ability here, and the ability is absolutely flat-out phenomenal. Cobalt Command. Attacks used by your future Pokemon except Iron Crown EX... Do 20 more to your opponent's active Pokemon. Yeah, this is phenomenal. The main partner for this, and we know this from looking at Japan who have got these cards right now. The main partner for this is going to be the new Maridon. This works so well with the new Maridon. Now that one for a single colorless energy does 40 damage. And you search your deck for two basic energy and attach them to your future Pokemon in any way you like. And again, I just told you that 70 is what you really want to be hitting here. 40 is not enough. But two of these puts you up to 80. You're golden. Or one of these in a future booster energy capsule puts you up to 80. We need to be hitting 70, or if we're going in even numbers like we are here, 80. We need to be hitting that number for this to be relevant. 
and thanks to Kabali, and we can. And now all of a sudden, you're KOing Evolving Basics, you're KOing a lot of support Pokemon, while accelerating energy, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is flat out ridiculous, phenomenal, and I love it. This is big. This is very, very big. So yeah, big, 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 big fan of the Cobalt here. No, Cobalion. Cobalt in the name, Cobalt in the attack name. Pokemon's called Cobalion. And it's largely for Maridon. And Maridon Cobalion is a great deck. When we get to EUIC, it's going to be a great deck. Over in, That's when the rotation hits and Temporal Forces becomes legal. Over in Japan right now, it is a great deck. And this is the coolest version of the Cobalion. Make no mistake about it. Bunny Bunny Poffin, great card. This Cobalion, great card. When I told you these were big reveals, there was no mucking about. There was no lying or any of that rubbish. No, 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 no. These are very big cards. But there are some other cards we need to have a look at which are not quite so big, but are still absolutely worth taking a look at. Like a new ace spec, Neo Upper Energy. Yeah, we thought it was going to be called Neo Superior Energy. That would have been good. But of course, we do actually have a history here with Upper Energy. Upper Energy is an old card that, if you're old like me, you might remember. Came around in Rising Rivals. And if you had more prize cards remaining than your opponent, and it was attached to a Pokemon other than a level X, it was two colorless energy. Well, Neo Upper Energy is more than one energy, but you don't have to be behind on prizes. It only works on Stage 2s, and yes, that does work on Stage 2 EXs. So, things like Gardevoir and Charizard, which incidentally aren't going to play it, but it would work on them. And it's any 2 energy. You don't need to be behind on prizes. It's not to non-EXs. It is just to any Stage 2s, and it's 2 energy. Now, remember, it is an A-spec card, and the thing about A-spec cards is you can only have one A-spec of any description in your deck. So you can only play one Neo Upper Energy, and if you play Neo Upper Energy, you then cannot play any other A-spec in your deck. It is this, and then nothing else. And frankly, looking at the other A-specs, it's just not really good enough. If this worked on Stage 1s, maybe. If it was free energy, probably. But no. Over in Japan, the lovely Joe over uh, Omni Joe on Twitter has done a great job collating Japanese results from the city leagues they've been having. And there is actually one deck which has played this and seen a very small amount of success over in Japan. And that is Tinker Tunny X. There have legitimately been Tinker Tunny X decks that have played this and seen some success. That is it. That is all we've seen. But it has been out there. Compared to something like Prime Catcher, nah, mate. It's not even close. Even stuff like Master Ball is seen playing Lugia decks. This. Maybe one day. Maybe we've not seen the right Pokemon yet. Maybe something's going to be released in the future. Which is going to then magically turn this into a super playable card. But like I say, these cards are legal over in Japan right now. We, we literally can look into the future. And right now, fringe play in Tingaton decks. That is the best that we've got. Sorry about that. Now, there is a Gengar coming, Gengar EX. And look, Gengar's super popular. Gengar was always going to have an EX. Now, Gengar is having an EX. And the attack isn't very good. Two Darkness Energy, 160, and you may, but you don't have to, move an energy from your opponent's active to one of their bench. And look, 160 isn't great, but it is two-hit KOing basically anything. And I've always said, if you can't get a one-hit KO, get a two-hit KO with Disruption. And you are disrupting here by moving your opponent's energy around. So in that regard, maybe. And we still do have Dark Pats. You can get this attack rolling quite quickly. Play a Dark Patch, attach from hand, boom, you're rolling. Problem is, it's a stage two. If we're looking at the old EXs from Gen 5, and this war, you know, big E, big X, and this was a basic, and I can Dark Patch onto it, and I can have this turn one going second, yeah. But it's not. Now, we do also have a lovely ability there, Gnawing Curse. Whenever your opponent attaches an energy card from their hand to one of their Pokemon, you put two damage counters on that Pokemon. 
We've seen this ability many times before. And it's not been particularly good. Weirdly, it usually ends up on an Amphros. We saw it on Dark Amphros way back in Neo Destiny. We saw it on Amphros EX in EX Dragon. We saw it on Amphros Prime. It's not always two damage counters, often actually one or three, weirdly. Uh, we saw it on the Amphros and Dragons Exalted. That was when it was three damage counters. Still didn't see play, incidentally. And weirdly, we've not actually seen it on an Amphros since Dragons Exalted, but I'm old enough that I still think this kind of ability works best on Amphros. Uh, the problem is, we, we've never actually seen this see a lot of play and success. Now, the good news is this Gengar doesn't need to be active. Yay! But the bad news is, it's not going to see play. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'd like to be wrong, though, because Gengar's cool. And then finally, we've got a Drampa. Lovely artwork by Mekiu, which is a new artist. They've actually done another card in the set as well. They're not an illustration rare. It's beautiful art. There's a random Butterfree flying around at the bottom of the card because I don't know why. There's a couple of people riding a Drampa because I don't know why. It's just a beautiful card. And to be fair, Raging Cannon is viable. It's free colorless energy on a basic Pokemon. And 100 damage. And if all of your bench Pokemon have at least one damage counter on them, it's 220. Now, you have to have all of your bench Pokemon being damaged, which is less than ideal. But it's 220 for free colorless energy on a basic Pokemon. That ain't too bad, ladies and gentlemen. That ain't too bad. Right, there we go. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me how excited you are about these new cards. Tell me if you're playing Buddy Buddy Puffin. Tell me if you think Cabalion is great. Tell me if you think you found a way to make Gengar work. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And of course, get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Andy White, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.